Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with .NET Nuke Corporation. In this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade .NET Nuke from version 5.6.1 to the latest release, 5.6.2. Now, the difference between this and other upgrade videos is I'm running .NET Nuke on Web Matrix locally on a Windows 7 machine. So the steps we're going to follow here, we're going to go through and we're going to back up .NET Nuke. And that's the most important thing you should do when you do an upgrade. You should always, always, always back up .NET Nuke. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do within Web Matrix. Then I'm going to show you where you can download the upgrade package for DNN. We'll extract the upgrade package. We'll go through and disable the website. We'll modify the web.config file to prevent the upgrade from firing off automatically. Then we're going to copy the contents of the upgrade package over our website files. We'll enable the website, and then we'll run the upgrade. So I'm going to switch over here to our .NET Nuke 561 instance running on Web Matrix. Now, I'm currently logged in. I really don't need to be. I don't need to go in and do anything, but we will log in and go to the host settings page just to show you which version of .NET Nuke we're currently running on. So that'll load up here in just a moment. Now, throughout the video, I will pause the recording as we go to processes where it's going to take a moment to download or do something. So here we can see we're running on version 5.6.1 and we can see it's currently running out of the users, admin user, documents, my websites, .NET New Community Edition folder. Now I can also access that folder from within Web Matrix by clicking on the path option. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to back up our .NET Nuke website and our database. Now using Web Matrix, this is very easy. Within the path here, I'm going to click on my websites, which will take me up one level. And I'm going to right click on the .NET New Community, Community Edition folder. I'm going to choose copy and I'm going to choose paste. By backing up this folder, copying this folder and pasting, I'm essentially making a copy of the .NET New website and the .NET New database. Now that's because I'm using SQL Server Express. If you're using a full version of SQL Server rather than Express, you will need to go through and you'll need to run a backup using SQL Server's Management Studio. Now, as the files go out and they, they copy, you might run into a problem where you have uh, files in use. And that's, in particular, going to be an issue with the database. So SQL Server Express is connected to our database file. So making a copy of those isn't going to be possible just yet. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and skip those. It'll copy the rest of the files. Uh, there's an MDF and a log file that we need to skip. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and disable the website and stop web matrix and that will then allow us to make a copy of that database so you can see we have this dot new community edition dash copy folder so for now let's go ahead and come in and stop the website in web matrix and then come into our dot new community edition folder i'm going to then copy the app data folder because that is where the database exists when you're using SQL Server Express. I'm going to copy that folder and then paste it back into that copy folder again. I'm going to go ahead and choose to replace. And that copies our files. Now if we go into that app data folder just to be sure we can see we have the database MDF and the database log file. So at this point, we've backed up .NET Nuke. Now, you should, like I said previously, you should always back up .NET Nuke before you do an upgrade. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the website back on within Web Matrix. And while we're waiting for that to fire up, I'm going to go ahead and go to download the upgrade package for .NET Nuke. Now, I can shortcut to get to the, the download. I'm going to go to .NET Nuke.codeplex.com. And from there, I'm going to click on the view all downloads option and I'm going to choose the 562 version upgrade package. So I go ahead and click on that file. I have to accept the license and then I'm going to save that file locally. Now I'm just going to save it into a downloads folder and pause the video while the download completes. So once the downloads complete, I'm going to go ahead and click on the open folder option. And I'm going to extract the contents of the download. Now, before I extract the files, I need to go ahead and right click on the zip file for the upgrade package and choose properties. Within the properties window, I'm going to click on the unblock option. For some reason, Microsoft Windows will block certain types of zip files. So we're going to unblock the zip file. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and extract the content. So I'm going to right click again, choose extract all. We're going to have it extract into a folder called .NET New Community 562 Upgrade. While the extraction process occurs, I'll pause the video recording. So once the extraction is complete, Windows goes ahead and opens up the, the extracted folder. Now before we copy those files, we're going to go over to our website and go into the website folder again. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to disable the website. Now if we were to try to go into Internet Explorer right now before I disable the site and hit the home page or hit another page, we're going to find that the website loads. And that's something you want to prevent when you're doing an upgrade. You don't want users to hit your website. They might fire off the upgrade process. So what we're going to do to disable the website is we're going to go in and we're going to create a file in the root of our website called appoffline.htm. So within that file, which we'll talk about in a future video, you can actually customize a message and display information to the end user. But for us, we're just going to go in and create that file. So if I come in and choose new within the root of the website, I'm going to choose new file and I'm going to choose a new text document for now. And I'm going to call the file app underscore offline. Now, in order to change the extension, I need to be able to see the extensions within Windows. So I'm going to go in and choose my folder and search options. And under the view option, I'm going to select the option to or uncheck the option to hide extensions. Click apply and click OK. Now our extension should show up. We can see it's currently appoffline.txt. I'm going to change that to appoffline.htm. Now putting that file into the root of an ASP.NET application will basically disable that application. Now if we try to go over to the website and load the site now, we end up getting a blank page. That's because there's nothing in that particular file. But it does disable the website, so users cannot hit the website. Now the last thing we're going to do before we copy all of our files in is we're going to go into the web.config file. Let me go ahead and open that up and it's going to open in Notepad. I'm going to find a section here or a setting called Auto Upgrade. I'm going to change that from true to false. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. That will essentially tell .nuke to not automatically fire up the upgrade process. I want that to be manual because I want to see the upgrade process. I want to see if there are any errors when we do perform the upgrade. So for now, I'm going to go over to the upgrade package and I'm going to copy the contents of the upgrade package. And I'm going to go to my .NET New Community Edition folder and I'm going to paste the contents of that upgrade package. Now this is going to override a large number of files within the .NET Nuke website. And we'll pause the video while the overwrite process occurs. But you do want to go through and choose to copy and replace and overwrite everything it does prompt you for. Now once the upgrade or the, the copy process is complete, we want to go in and we either want to delete the app offline file or we want to rename it. Now, I tend to rename it to .htm and I add a 1 onto the end of it. Doing so changes the name and, and enables the website again. So if we go back to the browser and we go ahead and do a reload here or refresh, what we're going to see is it's going to try to load .NET Nuke, but because we've copied the upgrade files in place and we have that auto upgrade set to false, it's not going to load up the website. We're going to see an under construction message. So that's what we would expect to see. Now what I want to do is in order to fire off the upgrade process, I'm going to change the URL. I'm going to navigate to the website slash install slash install.aspx question mark mode equal upgrade. Calling that URL is going to fire off the upgrade process for .NET Nuke. Now I'll go ahead and pause the video while the upgrade process completes. Now the upgrade process will go through and install a number of providers, extensions. You should see a success message next to most of these. If you see any red error messages, then it tells you something failed. But at the bottom, we can go ahead and click on the link that says click here to access your portal. And that will take us back to our .NET Nuke portal. Now the upgrade process was complete here, but you should always run through the upgrade in a test environment. You always want to make sure that the upgrade doesn't unintentionally break anything on your website. Now, because I was running a very basic .NET Nuke website, I, I'm not too concerned about it. But if for some reason the upgrade failed, I could just go back to my copy or my backup 
and restore that instead of using the existing website. So once the uh, website loads up here, we'll go ahead and finish up the video. So we can see that we're now on our .NET website. If we navigate to the host, ex host settings page or even the host extensions page, we'll be able to then see which version of .NET Nuke we're currently on. And we should be seeing version 5.6.2. So we can see here from the host settings page that we're on version 5.6.2. And that's completed our upgrade process. So I'd encourage you to check out more of our .NET Nuke training found under the resources tab on .NET Nuke.com. From there, you'll find a variety of free videos as well as information about our upcoming instructor-led training and information about our custom on-site and online training offerings. Again, this was Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.